if you want to create a program to use as our RGB LCD, let's try cloning Lab5B for instance here. We'll just say clone. And let's just call this Lab6 underscore LCD. And one of the things we're going to have to do here is we can't just have it the way it is. We're going to need a library. And so we're going to go here and we're going to say import. And we're going to say from libraries and we're going to say Grove space LCD. And we're going to take this top one here and we're going to slide it down to here and release it. And if we open this up, we'll find under classes here the Grove LCD set of class references. And the first one here is, as we've seen before, to set a pin name and associate it with this device. We also have set RGB to set our red, green, and blue, which are three different char values. We've got a clear class reference to clear our LCD of text. We have a print, but it only prints text. It does not print data. The thing that we have to do is set up our pins to our device here. Now we're going to use the word LCD here, and we can either specify D14 and D15, as you can see here, because it's part of our I squared C, or we could say I2C underscore SDA, which is this, and I squared C underscore SCL for serial data and serial clock here, or we could actually put PTE 25 and 24 in that order. Any three of these are fine, but this one isn't so good because it's very specific to our Freedom K64 board, and so is this. So what we'll do is we'll go with D14 and D15, which are the pins on our Arduino header that actually has the I squared C interface. Before we even do the hardware definitions, we should actually do the includes. Now we always do include embed.h, but now we have to include grove underscore lcd underscore rgb backlight dot h as well. To finish our coding, we have to say lcd dot print or whatever we've called it here for these pins, lcd dot print hello world. And what we're going to do is then just sit here forever once it's done. When you run this program, you're going to see the words hello world on our lcd display. For our grove lcd rgb backlight class reference, we have five public member functions. We've used this to set up our serial data and serial clock of our I2C interface to be associated with capital LCD. We've also used the print public member function to print the word hello world on our LCD display. Our LCD display can only print text and it can't print data, but we can use something called sprintf to actually allow us to print data as well as text on the display as we'll see. Besides having our print and setting up our pins here, we have the ability to clear our display. We have the ability to change the backlight color to any value of red, green, and blue to make any color from black to white and any color in between. And we also have a locate public member function, which allows us to position the cursor on our LCD to actually print out characters where we want them to. If we take a look at our code here, what we've done is we've cleared our display to get rid of anything that was on here before. We've set our colors to be 0 red, 0 green, and all blue. That's why we have a blue background here. We've done an lcd.locate5, 0, where this is the column first. So it goes column 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and row 0. Now rows go 0 and 1, columns go 0 through 15. And then we said the word hello world. And that's exactly what we've got up on here based on these different public member functions that we've used. Clear, set RGB, locate, and print. What we've done is we've made a couple of subtle changes to our program code here. What we've done is we said char buff, which is a character array or string of 16 elements. These 16 elements match up with 16 character positions on our LCD display. Now we're still clearing, setting our colors, we're still locating and setting our cursor to row 0 and column 5 here where everything starts at 0. And instead of just saying lcd.print and then hello world, we've added this new statement called sprintf. As you know, printf sends strings to our screen, but it also sends data to our screen. Now, sprintf, what it does is it sends strings to an array, and this array is called buff. So hello world goes into array buff, 
and then we say lcd.printbuff and we get exactly the same result as we had before. Now you'd ask yourself, well, why are we doing this? Well, because things like put string can only print strings. That's exactly what lcd.print does. It can only send strings. If we want to put data on our LCD, we're going to have to use printf to actually format data into a string and then print out what's in that array to the LCD. When you run this program, if you turn our 10k pod here, you'll see that as we turn it to the left, we can see our input values over here changing and the voltage equivalent to this changing on the right here. And this is all done by the sprintf percent 1.3f, 0.13f with some spacing in here, voltage, and voltage times 3.33.